Welcome, Andrew Smith. Thank you. Do you go by any nicknames like Andy or Andrew or Drew or Sir, Mr., Most, Doctor? <laughs> Most people just call me Andrew. Uh, okay. Unless you're over the age of 60, then then I get the occasional Andy. Okay, so. <laughs> sure. Well, I'm not quite there yet, but okay. And you are with the... The Warwick County Soil and Water Conservation District. Gotcha. But we also, my position in particular, also works um, in Vanderburg County as well. Okay. So. And you're dealing with urban conservation. Right. And whatever that means. Because <laughs> I, was, like I was telling you, I looked it up and it still didn't quite... You know, I, I think I get it, but uh, is there like a great definition you have for that for someone who's not, not maybe aware of this position? Well, I don't know that I have a, a, a great definition <laughs> because it, it's kind of, it can be a lot of different things. But sure. um, in a nutshell, basically, um, we're seeing a movement with uh, conservation districts like ours and then really, really conservation as a whole across the country where um, we're saying we've been for years focused on the agricultural community in terms of conservation, um, helping farmers essentially, you know, do things that can help them reduce soil erosion, in, improve water quality, soil quality, and things like that. Okay. But now what we're seeing is, well, you know, these districts are saying, what, a, what about everybody else? What about the folks that don't, you know, that aren't producers that don't sure. live out, you know, outside of town and stuff like that. Right. There's a lot of great opportunities for conservation in the city, in, you know, suburban areas and things like that. So, so that's kind of the, the idea behind my position. Um, you know, there's a few positions like this around the state, but mm-hmm. Warwick County is one of the, the first to actually have a dedicated position like this. And so, nice. yeah, it's pretty cool to be in on, on the yeah. kind of the ground floor. So yeah. it's a recent position then for you? Yes. Yeah. I just started in March. Okay. Yeah. And where were you before that? Um, I worked in environmental consulting. Okay. Just doing uh, engineering and cool. environmental type so work. So you're, you're in on the environment, is what we're saying. I think so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's safe to say. Right. Am I, am I misremembering, or did you say you lived in Oregon for a while when we met? Yeah. I think? Yeah. Okay. Um, I spent uh, a year and a half in Oregon. Um, I, okay. was, I was in a, a grad program out there. And, uh, yeah. So, so it was, Oregon's basically like Evansville, right? Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, there's some similarities. Okay, um, sure. there's also obviously <laughs> some major differences. Right, um, right. but, uh, yeah. And, and definitely when I was in Oregon, you can see, um, conservation, you know, practices being implemented there. And, uh, it was, well, Oregon's just an interesting place, um, you know, in terms of, a city. There's a lot of, I don't know, I don't know how to word it, but um, there's definitely the common denominator for people that live in Oregon. I think is that most people that live in Oregon have an appreciation for and love being outside. Okay. You know. Sure. Um, and I think that lends itself to, you know, well, let's take care of our water quality and and gotcha. things of that sure, nature. Sure. Conservation. Yeah. Um, I know you you're making the tour around different places, I guess. Like we, we met at the Haney's corner meeting, yep. which you would think, why are you at the Haney's corner meeting? But if you were <laughs> work for work, kind of, but like you said, you're, you're dealing with Vanderburg County too. And there's issues. Uh, I, I would assume that we all face around this area. I mean, and I've seen studies where like, we're not the, uh, cleanest of environments, I guess. <laughs> Let's and, put it that way. No, no. Um, yeah, sadly enough, the, uh, you know, the, the main geographic feature of our city, the river is yeah. one of the most polluted waterways in the U S. So yeah, we, we definitely have some work to do. Um, but you know, there's definitely, there's, there's organizations that are doing some awesome work in terms of conservation in, in Evansville already. So, right. So like what your mission then I guess is, is to do what necessarily, are you still trying to figure that out too? <laughs> well, Yes. In, in one sense, I am trying to figure that out. Uh, you know, they told me when I was hired, this is, this is, a this is uncharted territory sure. in terms of this position. So it's kind of up to you to what, you, you know, what you want to make it. That being said, I mean, in, in simple terms, my, it's my goal to help folks living in the city, living in suburban areas, do what they can to make our water cleaner mm-hmm. and help improve soil quality, which would include things like trying to minimize soil erosion and things like that. Um, but also we do, I mean, 
we're not just limited to soil and water necessarily. Um, we do things like we're really involved with pollinator plots. Hmm. And, you know, I don't know if, if how familiar you are with the, the pollinator issues that we're having, but... I know there's issues with bees is about as much as I know. Right, right. And yeah. that's kind of the poster child for, right. for you know, um, and then the monarchs, you know, the monarch butterflies. Okay. Um, but basically we're eliminating habitat mm-hmm. and um, pollinators are really, really important in terms of our ecosystems, but most, you know, at least in terms of where it hits home, are the food that we eat. Um, I've heard estimates of up to 75% of the the crops that we normally eat yeah. or consume need pollinators to some degree or need pollination to some degree. So, and those numbers would vary depending on who you ask, but that's pretty significant. Um, hmm. You know, I, I've heard stories of um, apple orchards in China that they're having to pollinate all of the, all of the trees basically by hand, Oh wow! which is, you can imagine a pretty crummy job. Yeah. But uh, also very expensive too. Right. So so there's some you know there's some some big issues there. Yeah. But that's one of our big conservation efforts as well as is working to reestablish pollinator habitat. Okay. So I mean, what could like it, these problems always seem so big, you know, when we hear. And if you I know people, some people choose to completely ignore them, or some people think, you know, I've got to do everything. But like, what can a normal person <laughs> just like? <laughs> is there small steps we can do to help out any of this stuff or? Oh yeah. 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 Yeah, And that's kind of the unique part about being a, a, an urban conservationist is you have, you get to deal with that very question because landowners don't have 10 acres that they want to plant pollinator plots or they don't deal with things on the same scale that uh, an agricultural producer would. Right. Um, most of the pollinator plots that we do are people that, you know, have, you know, a city lot and they say, I just want to, I've got a four foot by 10 foot area in my back and I want to plant it in native plants and and Mm -hmm. try to get a pollinator plot going, for example, things like that. Um, and I agree. It it kind of feels like a drop in the bucket and, and, and it is in some senses, but this is going to sound corny, but when you go out there and you see the pollinators in that plot doing what they do, it kind of, wow, you know, like this is really this is really having an impact, even, even this little plot, you know? Right. So, but we, we, we have a lot of educational things that we, that we try to promote, you know, mm-hmm. things like in the, in suburban areas and city areas, you get some of the problems we see with water quality are runoff from, you know, residential lawns where they're putting herbicides, mm-hmm. um, you know, fertilizer, things like that. A lot of that runs off, runs right into the storm sewers and right into our streams ultimately. Okay. In, in some cases. So, um, another thing is, and you know, I have a dog, but dog poop, right? <laughs> yes. Familiar. <laughs> yeah. It can yeah. really have a negative impact on water quality if, if people aren't picking up, you know, the right. dog waste and disposing of it properly. And again, it can make its way into, you know, storm water and ultimately impact stream water. So, hmm. I mean, those are just a few examples, right. um, but that's, what's kind of cool about, about, what I do is I get to deal with unique, unique forms of conservation that, you know, maybe yeah. aren't a lot of, on a lot of people's radar. So, huh. okay. So is there like a, do you have like a, a pet issue or there's something that you're <laughs> always like, man, if I could do this, if I could get people to do this one thing, that would be amazing. <laughs> well, my background, um, is in water quality. So I'm, I'm definitely interested in issues of right. relating to water quality. I think probably, and if you were to ask me that question in a couple of weeks, I might have a different answer, but, um, but right now, one of the big things that we're working on, um, is working with folks that, that have smaller gardens and stuff like that and getting them thinking about cover crops. I don't know if you're familiar with, with cover crops mm-hmm. and, and what they, but basically, um, you know, if you think about it from an agricultural standpoint, farmers will have X number of months during the year where the ground is sitting essentially oh, sure. unused, right? Right. Well, during that point in time, it's vulnerable, right? It's it's right. vulnerable to wind erosion, to water erosion, um, any other issue that might come up. But that's just one piece of the puzzle. So, so we try to get farmers and larger plots to plant cover crops in the winter to help reduce those effects. Now, the other thing is, is those crops that you can plant have awesome effects on the soil. They help promote organic matter 
being added to the soil. They help bring nutrients in some cases to the soil that weren't that are otherwise just being depleted mm-hmm. when the, when it sits you know fallow and stuff during the winter. There's a lot of major benefits, and depending on how creative you want to get and what you want to plant for cover crops, you can hmm. really tailor it to what you need in terms of your back gar- backyard garden, for example. Okay. So we're trying to get. You know, a lot of what I do is trying to get people to think about these conservation practices that are being used on the large scale. But how can we bring that scale that down sure, yeah. and experiment with it on a smaller scale and and reap the same benefits? Right. Interesting. Yeah. yeah, I think it was last year's TEDx event. There was someone that talked about planting native plants. Yeah. And the, the benefits of that and how, you know, things like the Bradford pear trees are... Yeah. The devil, basically. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The DNR recently officially referred to as the devil, I think. So. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, no. I was just, <laughs> I'm glad we're on the same page. Um, but yeah, so I guess I never really thought about it. I, thought, I always just assumed plant something, I guess, and right. you're, you're, good, you're good, right? Guess, <laughs> right, right. But not necessarily. No, no, right. Now, yeah, so, so what you're referring to is essentially the issue, uh, two issues, well, the counter counterpoints to the same issue of yeah. invasive plants versus native plants. I mean, if you were to come to Indiana, you know, 250 years ago, however far, you know, mm-hmm. before it was settled in at least in a major way, you'd see much different types of vegetation than we have today in most cases. Sure. And the native plants are adapted to our environment, you know, and Indiana actually is pretty unique in that it has a lot of different, you know, if you go to Northern Indiana, it's much different than Southern Indiana, right, but right. But there's a lot of native plants to the Midwest. They have much deeper root systems. They they're uh, they can handle our climate. You know what I mean? They can handle yep. drought. They can handle the the wet, <laughs> the humidity, yeah, yeah, the the moisture that right. we get, the flooding. But um, depending on what type of plant it is, there's some really cool images online that show the 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 root depths of native plants. And I mean, some of these you're talking ten feet down. Wow. And so. You know, when we hit our normal late July, early August drought, right. <laughs> when it stops raining and stuff, yeah. those plants are doing fine, you know, because of that. And they're adapted to that. And one thing that we are involved with, and it's a conservation issue, is the, the issue of invasive plants. So plants that are not native to Indiana, that harm our ecosystems, that harm crops in some cases, can be damaging to infrastructure mm-hmm. and are just general nuisances. Um, so things like that, that's that's a big problem. The um, you know, the big issue right now is poison hemlock is, is kind of one of those, well, there's a number, yeah. number on the, the top 10 most wanted list, oh but, boy. but there's a lot of issues. So, huh. um, we help, we help work with landowners to kind of clean up invasives too, and, and things like that. So do you have a list like on a website somewhere of like, Hey, here's some good plants. If you want to plant something or do they need to call in or something? Or? Um, yeah, either way, you know, we love, we love well, I, I like communicating with people, you know, more one-on-one and stuff like that. Cause I feel like yeah. a website's a website, but, right. um, our website actually has a lot of good links to, uh, to those, to that type of information. And it's, um, it's just Warwick SWCD.com. Okay. It's a no brand. weird gut govs or anything no, like that. Cool. It's pretty straightforward. <laughs> um, just Warwick SWCD, uh, dot com. And, uh, it's a new website. So we're kind of, okay, cool. kind of getting it up and going, but, uh, it, it definitely has some information about what we do and uh, things like that. I love it when people approach me with ideas like, hey, I've yeah. got I've got this idea for a conservation project. What do you think? And in some cases, I can even help, you know, the landowner pursue some some funding to help oh, nice. with that project. We have some some funding available depending on the type of project and the scale. OK, because that's a, unfortunately conservation is expensive. Right. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so. Yeah. In some cases. Right. Yeah. I'm always, I'm always trying to figure out like, what do I do with my yard? Cause I don't like to mow Yeah, and my, my children don't like to mow. Yeah. So, and they do a crappy job anyways, but, uh, <laughs> the, yeah, it's yeah. like, what can you, what can we do? And like the, the, the idea of these native plants, I like, I really like that idea. So. Yeah. And a very functional application using native plants is, are you familiar with rain gardens? You probably heard the term. I've heard the term, but right. I don't. Yeah. So, so basically the idea is, you know, we, when we build cities and when we develop land, we create all of these impermeable surfaces, mm-hmm. you know, roofs, driveways, streets, you know, right. anything. And that's not natural. 
right? right? Because normally rainfall would hit the ground and it would infiltrate into the ground. But what we do is we have all these impermeable surfaces. So when it rains a lot, where does the water go? It just collects on these impermeable surfaces. And then we're forced to build these big, expensive stormwater systems. Sure. That, right, yeah. right. So what these do is they kind of, they kind of allow an opportunity for rainwater to absorb into the ground. In a lot of cases, so say you have a downspout on the side of your house, Mm -hmm. you can do some calculations, it's pretty easy to do, and figure out basically how big of a rain garden you would need to build to collect the water that comes off of your roof. And essentially it's, in some cases, it's like a little basin that you build up and you plant native plants in it that have those really deep roots that I was talking about. Right. Some native plants are perfect because they can handle really moist conditions and really dry conditions. Hmm. So it rains, water runs down the downspout, floods into this little area, and in, in an ideal situation, it absorbs into the ground in a matter of hours. Right. So what that does is it keeps it from getting out to the street where it goes into the storm sewer, mm-hmm. allows it to, to absorb into the ground and replenish groundwater resources and stuff like that. Okay. And so it's, and they look great. I mean, if you do it right, it can look awesome. It looks just like your, your landscaping essentially. Hmm. So it's interesting. It's a really cool, really cool idea. Yeah. I mean, and, uh, I can guarantee you the city of Evansville would love you for it. So, <laughs> so what is like, say I don't do a, a rain garden, but like rain barrels, are you okay with those? Then yep. I assume that those are fine. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Evansville, uh, stormwater actually had a rain barrel initiative. I think it was last year Yeah, where they invited people to, to, to basically decorate them and right, you know, right. paint them and stuff like that. And then had a contest and stuff. But, um, yeah, that's an awesome way to, I mean, people want to water their landscaping, want to water, water, I guess, if you could even figure out a good way to do it, your lawn or mm-hmm. your garden, whatever it may be, collect that rainwater and use it for that. Um, it's an awesome, awesome. Anything that keeps it out of the out the, of the storm the storm sewer. Storm okay. Right, right. We yeah. have uh, we're working with uh, in Chandler, the Chandler United Methodist Church, and they have a community garden. Mm-hmm. It's been really awesome. It's just a, a very grassroots effort. It's people just hear about it and yeah. they come out and plant some stuff. But we've got um, Jeff Baker, who actually is on our board, is donating this huge twenty five hundred gallon tank. Oh wow! Which it's. It will. I can pretty pretty safely say it'll be the biggest rain barrel in right. in Chandler, definitely. But <laughs> yes. <laughs> but uh, and we're going to put that up, and it'll collect water off this huge por- portion of the church roof, mm-hmm. and then the people that use the community garden can then come and fill up their watering cans and stuff like that, and use it. Hmm. And uh, so, I mean, it'll it'll save countless gallons of water in the long right. run. You yeah. know in terms of what they're using to water the garden, yeah, but also gosh, yeah. keep it out of the, the storm sewers and stuff. So, yeah, that doesn't seem like it's that difficult to thing. Once you get it going, I guess setup's always the hard part, right? right. but uh, that actually seems maintainable. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, definitely. So. I mean, there are some things that you have to consider with something like that, such as mosquitoes and you don't want to, I have mosquitoes anyway, so. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. But it's pretty easy to combat right. those issues. Yeah. So. Any good tips for mosquitoes? <laughs> <They're>, <laughs> right, right. They're always bad. Right. Uh, no, wa- no standing water. Right. 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 You've kind of been on this tour of I don't know how many places you've gone, but uh, what's the reception been like? Everywhere I've been, it's been positive. I mean, there's there's certainly certain groups or, or individuals that I might meet with that are more enthusiastic than others. Right. But what I've been doing, a large portion of what I've been doing since I started in March is getting the word out there that, that this position exists, that I'm here to help people with these conservation efforts Mm -hmm. and then help them get funding for it as well. And, you know, you get mixed responses, but nobody's, nobody's turned me away for sure. And it's interesting because I I was talking with someone that works in our office and I found that the key to any community development type effort is finding that that key person that's kind of the catalyst. Right. All you need is that one person that's interested and enthusiastic and they yeah. can get other people on board as well. And so uh, that's mm. what I'm, I'm just hitting the bricks. And <laughs> you're on the search. <laughs> so if you're out there. <laughs> Whoever you are, contact me. Yeah, okay. And the best way to contact you is? You can go to our website, um, warwickswcd.com, and it has our uh, all of our con- all of my contact information, okay. my email, everything on there. Um, Great. Um, I think that's probably the best. We have a Facebook page as well, Warwick County Soil and Water District. 
Um, but all of that, that's probably the easiest yeah. way so, to get a hold of me. So what's better, pl- uh, planting a flower or playing bass? <laughs> <laughs> what kind of bass? Well, what I, kind of hey, flower? Hey, I, that's open ending question. I mean, <laughs> I don't know. You're past my area of expertise. <laughs> they, they both serve much different purposes, That's but uh, both can be enjoyed equally as much. So. <laughs> yeah. I, re- I saw you, you were playing at uh, the Sunday market recently with one of the bands. So I yeah, that was a, it's always interesting to see people doing, you know, it's like seeing your teacher out at the grocery yeah. store, right? <laughs> right? Seeing people outside there, they're where you know them from. But how long have you been playing? Well, I mean, I've been playing music, playing guitar since middle school. Okay. But I, you know, Billy Perkins, who's the, the founding father, I guess, of Cannon Hands <laughs> yeah. called me up last fall and he said, Hey, would you be interested in playing bass? And I was like, sure. So I went yeah. and bought a bass and did you know how to play bass? Well, I mean, I mean, you play guitar. Play, it's yeah. one of those things where there's, you know, there's some overlap. There's some overlap. I'm, okay. I'm uh, sure. enough overlap at least that I can, I can make it work. Okay. So. All right. All right. <laughs> well, that's cool. Yeah, I always like to know, is there, um, can I ask you a couple of non-conservation questions Absolutely. about Evansville? Sure. Since, especially since you've been to other places, is there something that Evansville's missing that you wish we had? I'll go back to my time living in in Oregon. The the Sunday market that we had a couple a couple I guess it was not this previous Sunday the Sunday yeah. before. There's just a sense of community when you go there. Sure. Yeah. And um and, and in Oregon there's a lot of events like that that I think really bring the community together. A a Sunday market like that happens, I mean, all over Oregon every week, you know, maybe not on that quite that scale, but they have, or whether, you know, might be more of a farmer's market, but there's, there's just a lot of events. I think Hmm. that if you choose to plug in, you can totally get plugged in. Sure. And I'm not saying that Evansville doesn't, that they'd lack that necessarily, but I think events like that are great for the community. Mm -hmm. And, you know, obviously the downtown area lends itself to events more, more, sure, yeah. more, although I don't know, I, there were some pretty, you know, suburban type areas in Oregon where that was, you yeah. know, um, Hey, if they can put on neighborhood yard sales, they can put on right other things. Right. Right. I'm guessing. So it was really cool to be a part of that and just yeah. see all the people. I don't know how many people came out. I didn't, but I didn't hear an official count, but there's a lot of people. I, I would guess. I don't know, 2000 people total. I don't know. Yeah. At least. Yeah. I was, I was thinking it had to be, I don't know. Yeah. I wonder if they've announced that yet, but, uh, yeah, it was, it's very cool to see that. It's always, it's it's a crazy event. Just, Hey, we're shutting down the street and yeah, just hanging out. Yeah. And you get to, you get to experience the, uh, you know, the creativity that's present in Evansville and you know, the, like all the different types of food that a lot of people normally wouldn't get to experience those. They're all in one place at one, right. you know, one time. And it's some more, more things like that. Yeah. I'm, I'm completely on board yeah. with that. That's yeah. It's cool. And, and I personally, being that I have a, a five and a six year old, sure, it's an event that I can bring my kids to, you yep. know, and those are, those are, you know, harder to find sometimes. So yeah, they don't enjoy the brew fest. <laughs> <laughs> they, they might enjoy it. For, <laughs> For other reasons, for other or reasons, something, yeah. But yeah. Okay, sure. Yeah. Well, cool. Well, I appreciate you coming over and, and talking. Hey, no problem. With me. Thanks so much for uh, inviting me. And I mean, anytime, well, uh, yeah, I'll be uh, picking your brain for 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 good plants here. <laughs> at some yeah, point. and that's and and that's what I I want people to reach yeah. out to me and uh, and just say, hey, I you know, like I said, I've got this idea, or I heard something you said in the podcast, or I saw something that you were, you know, I'm going to be around town giving talks and just communicating, sure, you know, you know, with different groups and stuff like that. Um, let's see what we can do. And, and I'm all for the harebrained ideas that people, <laughs> <laughs> like, we joke around, around about that in our office, just, yep. you know, we come up with some crazy ideas for conservation sometimes, but... Yeah, you know, let's let's see if we can make it happen. Well, so I know some crazy people. I can send them your way. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> right. Well, thanks. Yep. Thank you.